ok so it is time we move make a baby step towards the first imaging modality that we want to cover uh, which is going to be uh, radiography right so we talked about uh, our projection radiography if that uh, that was the title we put in the contents then it's projection radiography so essentially what uh, uh, recall right the way we want to organize and uh, uh, present the content is any modality we take we would start with the physics of the modality and then go towards the instrumentation aspect of it and then towards the image formation image reconstruction and finally talk about the image quality aspects in that regard the first modality we will start with uh, x-ray based imaging right so projection radiography and ct computational tomography right computed tomography x-ray computed tomography so we will start with the physics of that right so once we finish the physics then we will go to you know cover the the projection radiography first and then we will say when we go to ct we will say the physics is already covered and then proceed with uh, the instrumentation and the image recon for ct so clearly the physics that we are going to cover is going to be used or we'll be able to make a reference to it in the first two modalities projection radiography and uh, ct also maybe at points when we are there i would like to clarify that some of the things that we will cover here is in principle right to a large extent very you can carry forward that uh, for also the uh, pet imaging okay essentially when the photons are interacting with the tissue right we will say we did similar things for interaction of x-ray energy now when you have gamma it's just the energy is different and therefore these are the nuances so pay attention to this part right make yourself comfortable that way when we go to the other uh, modalities whatever we can carry forward from here we will make use of it okay so physics of radiography so we'll start uh, uh, you know the, the overview of what we want to do is we'll start with the basic structure of an atom right so these are all atom atomic structure and ionization in fact we we kind of use this term even uh, in the introduction that uh, oh these are ionizing radiations right so these are ionizing and then there is a uh, ultrasound and mri where it involves no ionization so we did use those terms now it is time for us to formally define what it is what we mean by ionization so before we do that we will uh, do one slide review of atomic structure just so that you know how what aspect of atomic structure we exploit which modality comes out of it okay so just for that purpose so this is nothing that, that there's there shouldn't be anything new in any of the content regarding atomic structure protons electrons and things like that okay so so in some sense atomic structure is just for uh, you know it's it's like kind of your um, starters so you get to into it but mainly we will understand the different types of radiations especially particulate radiations and uh, even within particulate radiation for the purposes of this uh, chapter we will talk about electron see particle is what you have so we will go into it in the atom electron is one of the particle right so we'll talk about uh, energetic electron and its interaction with the tissue uh, that that will be the focus um and then the other one is electromagnetic radiation in fact electro electron interaction is what we will not with respect to tissues per se we'll talk about electron interaction with the material and then here we will again talk about the other type of radiation which is electromagnetic radiation and these are the uh, important effects so the in some sense after the first uh, few slides in fact uh, um, when i say few slides it will still take some time for me to cover because i don't want to rush through even though you may know it uh, you 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 probably are very familiar i would like to go little slow here because this kind of forms a big picture understanding of 
the different modalities how each one is slightly different from the other so all likelihood uh, the first topic we will cover in this lecture and uh, the subsequent lectures and so we will lead up till the types of radiation in this lecture and then in the subsequent lecture we will go one after the other on this right so these are all subject specific so we are getting into the subject specific topics okay so having said that let's move on to the first one first one is atomic structure and ionization so what do we mean by ionization we need to define that in order to do that we need to start and talk about atomic structure of course uh, I, th there is going to be radiation dosimetry that we will cover because uh, we talked about ionization or we will talk about ionization and then we already mentioned in the previous lecture about exposure to x-ray and stuff so there is bio safety involved right so we need to understand what this radiation dosimetry okay so we will cover all of this in the physics so basic atomic structure basic atomic structure is everything that you know so early 20th century whatever they imagined right the planetary system kind of organization right you have the nucleus at the center and then there are orbits electrons spinning around the orbits the same model is what it is so that is the basic atomic structure so what are of interest you have protons and neutrons at the core right and then you have the electrons that are spinning around okay so since this is a very uh, known material from perhaps uh, high school right typically uh, i want to i it's not like i want to deliver this because this will be boring you know it so you will not so let's just uh, give yourself a challenge right so i'm just going to have lhs and rhs you please connect which is what okay so take some time so i have an atom i have nucleons mass number atomic number on the left hand side so since you know this from whenever right high school maybe it is a good time you refresh maybe you didn't read about this after that and uh, you are in typical electrical engineering mechanical engineering in your higher years and uh, you, you have not really had a chance to work with the material side of it so maybe you forgot can you refresh your memory see how powerful your memory is right an atom so what does an atom oh here is an example of an atom so what does an atom contain oh i see protons and neutrons and electrons protons and neutrons are at the center so that is nucleus oh so a nucleus and electrons what is nucleons oh nucleons nucleons are i see here right nucleons are the constituents of nucleus so what do i see protons and neutrons right is labeled oh okay so that is what that is so what is your mass number does uh, anything you know ring a bell oh mass number and atomic number atomic number maybe is that is easier if you can recall oh, atomic number uh, corresponds to maybe the number of electrons turns out the number of electrons and number of protons are same because the atom is uh, net neutral so maybe atomic number is the number of protons and number of electrons and your mass number has to do with your nucleons that is the number that is there inside what is nucleons protons and neutrons are there some of those is your nucleons okay so just go brush you know it's all reasonable i i know you you know it but just to make sure go one more time read about it and the reason for that is i mean just from what we have covered so far and the list of contents that we will be covering for the syllabus 
you already saw okay there is some x rays radiation ionization all that you know and then there is uh, this uh, nuclear medicine ah nuclear medicine and then i also mentioned mri the nuclear magnetic resonance so that means there is some nuclear that we are talking about is that same as here some is it here also you have nuclei right so is it something related right yes so essentially the idea is when you are talking about the outer electrons which we will do right that we will cover in the x ray part of it but in nuclear medicine that exploits energy that is coming out from the center nucleus and then nuclear magnetic resonance is the magnetic property right magnetic resonance property at the nucleus so in some sense we will start with the electrons in this chapter right the, uh, and then as you can see if the activity is from the nucleus so then that gives rise to some modality and then uh, if it is uh, 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 radioactivity then that is one modality if it is from nucleus but is not radioactivity but it is to do with uh, spin property then that gives uh, magnetic resonance right exploited in magnetic resonance imaging so you you know basic structure of atom how from there different modalities can be uh, traced okay so this is something that we covered so what we will do now is so much is uh, fine right we need to move on with more interesting stuff so just to complete this define the element with a particular symbol so it's a overbeat right so if you have a element you already call it as hydrogen carbon etc right so in order to represent that we could also use its atomic number and mass number right so there are several ways to denote it so carbon 12 c12 or you can write its mass number and um atomic number so it's a if, if you say 6 that is good enough but anyway you can also call it as carbon right so there are several ways to do it several conventions so some of the common ones are like this what is interesting in this is you can recognize the atomic number and mass number and uh, you have a name to it but based on the relationship between that you can comment on something is stable nucleate or unstable nucleates so what do we mean by stable nucleates if the number of neutrons is approximately equal to number of protons right in the nucleus if the number of positive charges right protons is approximately equal to number of neutrons remember the atom is net neutral so number of electrons is on the outside so therefore this is net neutral so number of neutrons if the number of neutrons is approximately equal to number of protons you can also look at it this relationship right between atomic number and mass number so mass number is approximately two times the atomic number then that is considered a stable nucleate so this has to do with the stability of the nucleus unstable nucleates are called radio nucleates so where so if if it's a radio nucleate then that atom is called radioactive atom why is it unstable because statistically it is likely to undergo a radioactive decay right so it is in a energy state where it is not stable so it will give out some energy and come back to a stable state so stable nucleus means it is going to have this proposition okay so unstable nucleate stable nucleates so these are the states two states that are there and then uh, if you really look at it in the second part right in, when we go to the nuclear medicine the signal will come essentially because of this radioactivity right but here we we, we are not worried about the unstable nucleus part right or the radio nucleates radiography is different from radioactivity here we are not the first part when we do radiography 
that does not mean radioactivity, radioactivity means it comes from the nucleus ok instability, instability of the nucleus. So, that is a subtle difference. So, radiography we are not talking about radioactivity, radioactivity is exploited in nuclear medicine ok fine. So, that means uh, we talked about stability, instability of nucleus, but when you talk about uh, and then we talked about the organization of electrons around the nucleus right. So, depending on right, so there is a structure to it. So, how does a electron we, we saw the first uh, structure diagram where the electrons were spinning around right, it was, they were orbits it was shown in a 3D uh, sketch. So, you have number of electrons, but then the number of electrons are also organized that that orbits that you have is so organized that it is labeled as k. So, you have a, a, a orbit that is closer to the nucleus which is k referred to as k shell, l shell and m shell and n shell and so on and so forth. And by nature what happens is the number of electrons right for a given atom that tries to organize such a way that it will first fill the k shell and not only that it can have only so many electrons in a shell in, in a respective shell. So, that the energy is in a low energy state. So, that means there is already a number of electrons that can be in a particular sh shell. So, the uh, quantum states that the electrons can be right it is restricted. So, k shell you have maximum of two electrons. So, this n is the shell number. So, as you go away right outer orbits you can have more electrons that can reside and this is a distribution ok. So, why is this important? Uh, this is important because left to itself the ground state requires that each of the electron not only occupy the, the, the uh, shell that is starting from k right. Electrons are in the lowest orbital shells and within the lowest energy quantum state. So, within a shell it is positioned so that that also gives the lowest quantum quantum state. So, in some sense the the atom it is favorable for the electrons right to be in this shells in these shells right within the influence of your nucleus so that it can be less energy ok. So, that is your ground state or the low energy state. left to itself in nature this it will be organized such that it is in the low energy state that is the take home message. So, that means uh, we need to talk about these energies if this is low energy state and uh, if I want to uh, and if I say that these electrons are uh, attached right it is revolving around the nucleus there is a positron that there is a uh, protons at the center and so that it is net neutral that means there is an energy with which it is binding right to the, the nucleus. So, that means we need to talk about electron binding energy. So, in some sense if we already see through and uh, look at the fine print in our definition of ground set right in ground state we said it, the electron is so organized that it is in the lowest the atom is in the lowest lowest energy state or the ground state. So, if it is organized like that so the electrons are not free it is in the orbit right. If it is organized as that that is your ground state imagine if the electron is free what energy will it have? If the electron is free oh the free electron will probably have more energy right. Why? Because uh, that is the idea that is the lowest energy state. So, if it is free probably it will have higher energy. In other words to think about it that means, I need to supply some energy to release this electron right. So, your electron binding energy in some sense is the energy that it you need to overcome you need to supply 
so that you can free the electron. But when you talk about the electron, now the question is, oh, I have different shells, which one are you talking about? Right, I mean naturally, so you have so many electrons, you have in K shell, L shell, M shell, is the energy going to be same? You might know or intuitively you can guess the, the, the center, you have positive, electrons are negative, so it is, it is all nicely revolving around it. So, if the closer you are, right, the more influence of the positive charge is going to be. The farther you are, the less. So, maybe to bump the electron, remove the electron from the outer shells, I may need to supply only less energy. If I have to really remove something from the, cent the, the shell that is closest to the, the nucleus, I may need to uh, s give more energy, right. I have to spend more energy to pull it out. So, that means, that energy is also dependent on, so for a given atom, that energy is dependent on which electron you are talking about, right. So, let us just put that together. A free electron has higher energy than when it is bound to a nucleus of an atom. It is a mere statement, but I think you should read this statement as a natural follow-up of our understanding of ground state. In the ground state, if it is a low energy state, if the electron is freed, that means it has to have I energy, right. So, that means where does the energy come from, right. That means you can think about it both ways. It has high energy. So, if it is bound to the, if you make it, if the electron goes, binds itself to the atom, right, reconfigures itself, then energy has to be sent out in the process so that it goes to the ground state. Or if it is in the ground state, if you give it some energy, then you can free the electron. So, that will be the, the energy that you supply, right. So, naturally you are supplying more energy to what was the ground state. So, the, the electron is going to have a higher energy state. So, free electron is going to have a higher energy than when it is bound to the nucleus. So, when we talk about the binding energy, now what is this binding energy? This is the energy that you need to supply to free the electron, right energy required to free the electrons, that is the binding energy. So, it is not the energy that it is. So, in some sense, it is so it is bound to this nucleus. You have to supply an energy that is greater than this bounding energy, right. That is what is called as binding energy. So, you have to supply an energy that is greater than the binding energy to free the electron, okay. So, that is your uh, uh, binding energy, but then you look at it from their atomic orbit. So, for a given atom, right, it might be easier to free the atom, uh, free the electron from the outer orbit, right. So, the binding energy is not, even for a given atom, binding energy is not same for all the electrons in the atom. It depends on the shell, right. But for practical purposes in this course, right, because the, the we have an application in mind, so we, we work, work with the uh, so, in our scale of the energies that we are talking about, we do not really care about that detail. We will be okay with the average energy, okay. So, clearly the binding energy depends on the element to which the electron is bound naturally and the shell within which it is residing in the ground state. Both are, so I mean, so if, if, if you have a larger atom, right, if you have a larger atom, then there are more number of uh, protons in the nucleus, right. So, uh, the electrons if the, in the K shell, for example, is going to be more attracted, right. You need to spend more energy to release that. It also depends on the shell number. So, the atom and the shell number of the electron both have a role to play in the determining the binding energy. For our purpose, we will say on an average what is the binding energy for a given atom, okay. So, so much for binding energy and this is a very important concept. So, let us, let us uh, make a, uh, you know, example first when we talk about energy, let us get the units out first and then we will have some feel for what numbers are we talking about with respect to. So, one electron volt, right is actually very straightforward. 
electron volt how do we read ha huh? when you have an electron right it's a energy that we are talking about so you have a kinetic energy so you have an electron electron is what or oh, negatively charged right e minus negatively charged so if you make this electron travel right so i have a voltage drop voltage drop you have a voltage drop and if you have a voltage drop current flows right so that means the electrons move so kinetic energy gained by an electron when accelerated across 1 volt potential that is your 1 electron volt okay so 1 electron volt is so many joule so this is the energy that we are talking about so now we, if we, we define this then all the energy that we are going to talk about binding energy amount of energy you need to supply what causes ionization all of them when we talk about energy you will be able to relate to this units electron volt right so one electron when it is accelerated over a 1 volt difference right what is the kinetic energy okay so that is your one electron volt that's going to be your units so you know typical energies just so that we complete because we said it depends on the element type so you look at here binding energy of typical elements hydrogen is 13.6 electron volt air 29 look at here lead tungsten kilo electron volt kilo electron volt so without much detail here just looking at the numbers and a typical uh atom that we sense where it could be so where do you see hydrogen okay we are water bodies h2o right so we have a lot of hydrogens look at the value 13.6 electron volt is the binding energy required for hydrogen right whereas look at lead or tungsten 4 kilo electron volt naturally they don't have inside us right so if you're talking about some energy that needs to be provided to free the electrons to free the electron from hydrogen i need only 13.6 electron volt right whereas if i supply that 13.6 electron volt or 15 electron volt is nothing lead and tungsten it's in the kilo electron volt okay so in that sense nothing will happen if i supply uh, some energy 14 14 electron volt or 20 electron volts or 100 electron volts to a lead nothing is going to happen you are not going to be able to free the electrons whereas hydrogen requires very small quantity right so by mistake if i uh, supply some quantity of energy thinking i want to uh, you know free the electrons in lead but instead of lead uh, you know human tissue is there then you see the problem so many electrons will be freed right okay so we'll talk about that in the subsequent slide as well that is a important concept which we will now ionization and excitation what is ionization or oh, knocking off an electron out of an atom Uh, now you understand we talked about binding energy of a electron so that is the energy that i need to supply to free the electron now what is ionization ionization is knocking an electron out of the atom so in order to do ionization right in order to knock an electron out of the atom what should i do oh i need to supply a energy that is greater than the binding energy so if i supply an energy that is greater than the binding energy the electron will be kicked out what happens if the electron is kicked out oh if atom is neutral i send energy and kick out the electron then the electron is free and then the atom will become positive right so you have to you have ions ions are created right 
if I supply energy and knock an electron out, then I am creating ions, right? E minus and then this one will be plus. So, I have created ions. So, the process of kicking an electron out to form an ion is ionization. So, in order to do ionization, what do you need to do? I have to supply energy that is greater than the binding energy. So, now you see the problem, right? Now you see the problem. The, if you do ionization, right, you are breaking the stable atom into its ions, okay? So, what will happen immediately? So, first it creates a free electron, right, plus an ion. So, an atom with a positive charge that is your ion, right? So, you create a free electron and then there is ion. That is why it is ionization, okay. When does it happen? Occurs when radiated energy above the electron binding energy. So, when you hit, when radiated with energy, meaning you, you, you supply energy, you subject this atom to an energy that is greater than binding electron, electron binding energy. Only then ionization takes place, right. So, what do you mean by excitation? Oh, excitation means like excited, you put in some energy, right, then you are excited, right. You are in a ground state, dull, then you infuse some energy, you get excited. But that is not detrimental by itself, right, because so, so in some sense you are providing energy here also. So, you are making it go away, rise above the ground state energy level, but then uh, it is not knocking the electron out. If it knocks the electron, it is ionization. So, excitation is knocking an electron to a higher orbit, not outside the atom, to a higher orbit. So, I, I am putting some energy to pull the electron out. So, from K, it is coming to L, it is coming to M, right. In order to completely come out of the atom, it needs to come out of all the influence. But I did not provide that much energy. I just provided energy such that it was trying to come out from K, it was coming to M and that is it, energy is expanded. Then what happens is the from the ground state, it is now in an excited state, meaning the electrons is uh, occupying the higher orbit. So, left to itself what it will do? So, when the radiation is lower than the binding energy, you just excite, you do not kick it out of the atom or you do not knock it out of the atom. So, either case if you look at it, nature has it that it has to come to ground state, okay. So, how does it come to ground state? So, now you have supplied energy, so now you have a high energy state, both the free electron and the ion and the higher energy state because you supplied some energy. So, immediately what will happen is the electrons will try to come form the ground state for the atom. Likewise, if it was kicked up to a outer orbit, right, in case of uh, excitation, it will now come back to its lower orbit state, lower energy state. In the process, it will send out the excess energy, okay. After either ionization or excitation, an atom has higher energy, right. Now, immediately what it will do? it will try to come back to ground state, okay. So, so, diagrammatically representing that this is your atom, you send some energy, so it is called as radiation here, right, we will come to that. So, you have radiated with energy is what, so it is radiation. So, you are supplying energy. So, the energy that you supply, if you have enough energy that is greater than your binding energy, then it kicks out the free electron. So, you have a hole. So, same thing, it if it does not kick out the electron in the outside the atom, but if it kicks it into higher orbits, then also you will have a hole. So, either excitation or ionization, you essentially have higher energy state and there is a hole that is created because of the electron that is left out or moved out of that shell. So, now immediately what will happen is, immediately what will happen is yes, 
it cannot stay in that high energy state it has to come back to ground state right so that means it has to it is now excited there is all the energy it went up it has to lose all the energy to come back to ground state or because it has to come to the ground state that's the nature's order in the process of coming to the ground state it has to shed the extra energy right send out the extra energy so returns to ground state by rearrangement of electrons why rearrangement right we talked about when it comes to ground state it, it so chooses its alignment it comes to the shell and even within a shell it takes a quantum state that's the lowest configuration that it can and therefore that is rearrangement so causes the atom to give off energy yeah it has to give off the energy because that is excess energy so when this energy that is given off right it is called as characteristic radiation and why it is characteristic because the energy that comes out is characteristic of uh, so these are all energy if you look at your spectrum that we saw in the introduction class right you had infrared light x rays visible light x rays gamma rays right all of them are based on energy so we had wavelength energy axis remember frequency axis we had all the three there so essentially if you give the energy out and if that energy comes out in one of these that is we call as the characteristic radiation it is characteristic of the energy gap that it is coming that is making this uh, um excess energy come out in this particular wavelengths okay so that is your characteristic radiation so now uh, let's uh, for example right take a case to just get a feel for a number you have a electron that is accelerated through a x ray tube where the anode is made of tungsten okay so when i say electron is accelerated that means i uh, have voltage drop and uh, recall your definition for electron volt if one electron right is accelerated across a 1 volt potential difference the kinetic energy acquired is your electron volt remember so here it is not 1 volt it is 120 kilo volts so when i have an electron that is accelerated through x ray tube right where the anode material is given as tungsten and the the potential difference is 120 kilo volts right so what is the maximum number of tungsten atoms that can be ionized so now in some sense we are putting all the terminologies together so if i have to answer this question if you have to answer this question what do you need to know oh binding energy i need to know the energy that is is there that is hitting this tungsten the kinetic energy that is hitting the tungsten so we say energy that is needed and then that energy is obtained from as the kinetic energy of this electron dropped across 120 kilo volts and then what is asked ionization of tungsten atom so then you have to know something about the tungsten tungsten atoms characteristic right what is that binding energy so if you know the binding energy of the tungsten then you can quickly calculate and say oh i know the energy that is being supplied to the tungsten right because it is one electron accelerated across volt 1 volt is the kinetic energy is 1 electron volt now it is 120 kilo volt so it is 120 kilo electron volt is the energy that is what the tungsten atom is bombarded with that's what it is radiated with now if we know the tungsten's binding energy it is the average binding energy of tungsten atom then i can calculate for one electron right one electron to leave one atom to be ionized i need so much binding energy if i hit with 120 kilo electron volt how many atoms can be ionized right simple so the electron will be 120 kilo electron volt kinetic energy when it is heating the anode when it is reaching the anode so anode 
we have tungsten. So, the average binding energy of tungsten is 4 kilo electron volt which is what we saw in a uh, couple of slides ago right. So, if this is there then you can immediately calculate the number of atoms that can be ionized right 120 by 4 because it is kilo electron volt and right the k gets cancelled. So, you have 30 atoms. So, you get the feel for what ionization is what energy level are you talking about remember what is the so for our purpose what is so this is fine right is this too much or too little ok 30 atoms are ionized right hitting 120 kilo electron volt you are ionizing tungsten we are not really worried right now what will I be worried what will you be worried I want to make sure I do not ionize the body that means in relation to hydrogen. So, we are interested in ionization of hydrogen ok. So, all the energy we are interested in ionization of hydrogen for all practical. So, here ionization of tungsten is ex explained because you have to generate x rays right. So, this will come in x ray tube ok. So, for all uh, practical purposes what we will be interested in radiation energy greater than 13.6 electron volt we will call it ionizing radiation because that is enough to ionize hydrogen ok. So, clearly what is called what is the energy that is needed for ionization depends on the material that you are talking about. So, 13.6 electron volt cannot ionize tungsten but it can ionize our hydrogen which is what we are composed of right a lot of hydrogen. So, for our purpose any energy that you irradiate the body with which uh, which can which is greater than 13.6 which is the binding energy of hydrogen which is ionization of which can cause ionization of hydrogen is ionization for us it is we need to call it as ionizing radiation clear. So, in medical imaging we employ X rays right ionizing radiations we talked about first is X ray base. So, X ray energy in this range right 30, 40, 60 if it goes out it can ionize so many atoms for hydrogen right because it is only 13.6 here you have kilo electron. So, you can actually go thousands of atoms can be ionized clear. So, that is important. So, that is the uh, radiation ionizing radiation when we call when we talked about in you know medical imaging when we talked about bio safety we said radiation uh, in fact we will cover radiation dosimetry in the end all right. So, when we talk about ionizing radiation with respect to human body we are interested in ionization of hydrogen the electron binding energy of hydrogen is 13 13.6. So, anything greater than this has a uh, potential to ionize human body ok. So, that we will keep in mind. So, now the question is how do you cause ionization I mean it is not you do not want to cause ionization let me let me not phrase it that way. How much radiation you need to give right how do you give these are two aspects. So, if I want to generate in the x ray tube example that we saw we wanted to uh, create ionization why because ionization itself is not an issue after ionization what will happen it will try to go back to its ground state and therefore give out energy in a certain characteristic range right. So, when the tungsten in the previous example is bombarded so many atoms are ionized then what will happen? Oh, it will cry, the atoms will try to go back to its ground state. Thereby, it will give out energy, and that energy comes out in the X-ray range. That's why it's X-ray tube, right? So it will give out energy, and that energy that comes out is in the X-ray range. So in some sense, you are creating X-ray energy. And in the modality, what we want to do? We want to use that as a probing signal. We want to send X-ray energy through the body right and then make use of it 
see how it interacts with the body and uh, uh, so detect whatever is coming through on the other side. So, in some sense the we are talking about through transmission. So, we are sending x-ray energy through the body what comes out on the other side it is through the body through transmission. So, in fact, in some sense in the gamma also that is what we do the radio tracer is going the energy radioactivity energy is coming in a different range say gamma energy, but it is essentially the energy that is coming out, but it is coming out from inside to outside through the body it is coming through the tissue it is coming. So, in this case in the first part x-ray imaging we send the x-ray generate the x-rays outside send it through the body and collect it outside through the when, when it leaves the exits the body correct. So, in some sense you, you can have two types of ionizing radiations. One is you can already we saw particulate what is particulate oh particles what are the particles in atom that we were in one example we already saw oh electrons protons right. So, how can I use a, a particle for ionizing radiation just now we saw a electron which is a particle if you give voltage drop it gains kinetic energy bombards on tungsten ionizes it and once the after ionization when it gets back the uh, atom tries to go to its ground state it releases x-ray energy. So, you can create ionization using particulate or you can use electromagnetic radiation. So, there are two types of radiations here again you will notice what hap what is an example of electromagnetic radiation ah, I kind of said it. So, what happens in the x-ray tube we said after the like x-rays are generated that x-ray has to go through the body that x-ray is just a energy right x-ray energy it is energy packets. So, it is electromagnetic radiation. So, the electromagnetic radiation is sent through the body and that energy if again is greater than your binding energy of your hydrogens we call it ionizing. So, you can cause ionization by two types of radiations one is particulate the other is electromagnetic particulate will be exploited in the instrument to generate source of energy whereas, electromagnetic radiation is going to interact with your tissue or cause radiation uh, ionizing radiation right it is going to cause ionization through the tissue ok. So, particulate is any particle proton neutron or electron if it possesses enough kinetic energy that is what it is ok. So, uh, so yes you can actually also create a charged particle and direct that particle through your body right you, you can do that, but uh, typically in the example that we saw we already saw that particulate radiation was exploited in the x-ray tube. Hmm? So, kinetic energy what is the kinetic energy kinetic energy is due to the motion right it came so it has a mass and it is moving. So, you can uh, in some sense we will have to talk about the mass of the moving particle mostly we use uh, we do not take uh, consider to speed of light right the velocity is very negligible then the relativity theory does not mean much whereas, these particles electrons of one can be actually moving at a velocity that are fractions of c ok and therefore, we will have to get the mass not just as a rest mass, but because of the velocity it has a relativity relative mass. So, mass of this moving particle is m naught which is the rest state of the mass, but it if it accelerated right it moves with a velocity v which is a, a reasonable fraction of c. Then we will have to use m the rest mass. So, if the velocity increases the mass also increases right if the velocity is 0 or very insignificant compared to c then m is equal to m naught that is your rest mass ok. So, why is mass important because energy and mass are related by E is equal to m c square clear. So, this is the energy we are interested in the kinetic energy. So, what is kinetic energy kinetic energy is you have rest state some energy because of velocity you are moving acceleration you have some other. Energy. So, the kinetic energy is the difference between these two 
right. So, kinetic energy is E minus E naught. So, quickly you can substitute E is equal to mc square. So, m minus m naught c square. If, if v is negligible, then it comes down to your typical ke which is half m v square or half m naught v square. Okay. So, that is your particulate radiation. So, we will actually stop here. We will continue forward because we have now covered the two types of radiations and we started with what is particulate and where does it get the energy. What we need to still do is understand what how you know what are the typical interactions of this radiation with the material. Likewise, then we will introduce electromagnetic radiation and what are the types of interaction of this electromagnetic radiation with the material. If we cover that, that is a huge step of the underlying remember underlying what? In X-ray projection radiography or X-ray CT, we are interested in catching the attenuation property of the tissue to the X-ray energy. So, if we cover the inter what do we mean by these and how ionizing radiation and how does it interact, if we cover that, we are getting our clues as to what our potential signal is, right. So, we will stop here, we will continue forward with this material in the next lecture. Thank you.